So you now have your Raspberry Pi, we have to set up the initial installation and the setup of the operating system. And there are two ways that we can do this. The first way is with noobs. Now this is a fantastic, easy to use version, uh, which allows you to install multiple operating systems onto one SD card, allowing you to flip and change between these different versions, and will give you greatest flexibility and recovery in the future if you do encounter problems. Option two is a raw installation of the operating system. And we do this by copying an image of the original operating system onto an SD card. Now this is the rawest and the straightest way of doing this and we do need additional software to be able to install this. In this video we're going to go through both options and hopefully at the end of it you can see which one suits your needs best. So the first thing we want to do when we have our Raspberry Pi is to get the operating system onto the SD card so we can actually use the device. So we need to go to the Raspberry Pi website which is simply raspberrypi.org and go to the download section. Now you will notice there are two different options to download. The first one is Noobs, which is the new out of box experience and the Raspbian, which is a raw copy of the official operating system, which is a Linux based operating system. So we're going to in this video, we're going to go over both options, but we're going to start with option one, which is the Noob software. So we simply click on that link. So there are two options, but for simplicity, we're just going to download the first option here. Okay. Now whilst that's downloading, we need to get some software to help us format our SD card. So we're going to go to sdcard.org and we're going to go to downloads and we're going to download this software here, SD memory card formatter for Windows. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to accept that. And we will see here we have both of our downloads going. So now we have our two pieces of software downloaded and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract the SD card formatting software and we're going to install this. So we can see at the moment there's no SD card here so I'm going to quickly just plug my SD card in and we'll see that be selected. I need to give that a name so I'm just going to call it rpi1 and I'm just going to select this as a quick format and let that go. There we go, that shouldn't take too long. That's now completed. And that was successful, fantastic. Close that software. I'm just going to quickly snap my downloads folder over here. And on the other side, I'm going to select my SD card and go back to my download section and find the noob software and I'm just going to quickly right click on that and I'm going to use the 7-zip software I'm going to extract those files to here and that will create create a folder which I can then go into and drag all of those files into the SD card this will take a while so I'm just going to speed this up okay now that's completed what we can do is we can safely eject this SD card there we go and we can plug that into our Pi, all the power cables, keyboard, mouse, video, and everything, and boot for the first time. So when you power on the Pi for the first time, you'll get this multicolored rainbow screen, which is just the initial booting stage of the Pi. Then what will happen is it will attempt to load into what's called a bootloader, which is the noob software kicking in. It will give us the option to select multiple operating systems. So the two key ones it will provide is the standard Raspbian build, which is the recommended normal Linux based operating system. And then below that you have a Kodi based media center build, which is a very common um, choice for lots of people. At the bottom, you also have the option to change the keyboard layout and languages for this. So in this instance, we're just gonna select the main Raspbian build and then press I to install. We're gonna okay that. It's gonna override our SD card and everything, but that's no problem at all. And that's it one. Now this process is quite, uh, takes quite a few minutes. So we're just gonna speed up the process. This is sped up, not the real speed. And then once that's done, we can literally click OK. It will boot into its normal boot process, which is where it will load into the noobs bootloader very, very quickly and then select that Raspbian build. And it will start with the first time initial wizard, which we'll cover later in the video. OK, so this time we're going to use the second option for installing the operating system. So we're going to go to the download section on the Raspberry Pi website and we're just going to go to this straight Raspbian build. This is just a pure image 
of your operating system um, and there's nothing fancy going on with it. We have three different options here and uh, we can go for uh, different sizes, light version, desktop without really any software installed or with uh, the main recommended uh, version with all the software installed. So we're gonna click download and that will start downloading that file. Also, what we need to get is some um, software to allow us to be able to copy the image from our PC onto our SD card. And we're going to use this software here, which I believe is called Blainer Etcher. And uh, we're just going to click download and download those files there. They take a little bit of time to download, so we're just going to skip. Okay, now those two files are finished loading. We have them here and here. What we're able to do is to quickly run the setup here. Very simple, just click yes to everything and that should automatically load. So we're gonna select our image and in our download section, we're gonna have the file that we downloaded. We don't need to uncompress this. We can just give it the zip file. Software will do that for us. We can then just select the uh, SD card we want and we're gonna click flash. And again, a bit like before, this is gonna take a bit of time. So we're just gonna leave this to complete. This normally takes about five minutes or so. And once complete like that, we just take up the SD card and plug it into our Pi. Now the first boot is gonna be slightly different because it's gonna go straight into the operating system. What will happen is you will see that it will attempt to resize the SD card because it checks to see how big the SD card is and then will expand into that. Um, and then it will reboot quickly and then it will go straight into the Raspbian desktop environment, just like you would if you had selected Raspbian on the noobs build. Now your first setup of the Pi is the same with noobs and with sort of the raw Raspbian. We get this welcome screen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select next and we're gonna select uh, that we want to use the English language. And we're gonna click next and just make sure that things like keyboard settings are set and fixed. And we're going to type in the password. I would recommend something secure or if you're using something off net that doesn't have anything private on it, just something rememberable. rememberable. Okay, now it's now going to look for our wireless network. I would like to connect mine to my wireless network because this is easiest. It can take a couple of seconds just for identify. I find my SSID and I'm going to type in the password to my wireless network. Now this often does take a little bit of time to connect. And there we go, that's completed. Now we have an option to update our software. Now this does take quite a long time to download. Um, in this instance, I'm just gonna skip it. And once we skip that, we're just going to say uh, restart. We want those new password and everything to be accepted. Okay, now the Pi is up and loaded. One of the things we can quickly do is just to check that we have internet access. So we're gonna click on the browser, which will load. And then we're gonna quickly try and go to the Raspberry Pi website. And there we go, there's the Raspberry Pi website. And from here, you can look at all the applications that are pre-installed with this software version. And then from there, we are pretty much ready to go and start our first project. Hopefully you now have your Raspberry Pi up and running and you have a project in mind that you would like to try and complete. And in the coming weeks, we'll be releasing tutorials with things that you can do with your Raspberry Pi that are all updated for 2019. If you are enjoying these videos, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you would like to get the latest updates, ring that bell. Thanks for watching.